So um, my name is uh, Faisal Bachari. I will be your pro professor for this course, Supply Chain Management, and the course called Operation and Supply Chain Management. Um, let's start, uh, first of all, uh, give, uh, give a, a very brief about myself, and then we will talk about the, the, the plan, course plan, and then we uh, will get into the course. Um, let me know if you can hear me. Okay, um, if you cannot hear me, please send me a message so I can uh, see what's the problem with your with the, with the case. Now, very good, excellent. First of all, um, I just wanted to know, it's, it's a big class. We have over uh, almost 40 students. So it would be nice if you um, keep uh, your, uh, your microphone on mute and anytime you have a question, um, you just write it so I can answer it. That's one thing. And uh, I would like to see your, uh, your name also showing as because I would like to know you much better. Uh, so uh, if you don't mind that we can uh, later on, if you can send me your CV to my email, so with a picture attached to it, so I can understand you and know you much better. Now, just very quickly about myself. Um, I probably um, started my education in Winnipeg, Manitoba, but I finished my high school there and uh, my, uh, most of my education. Um, probably 30 years ago, uh, I was in, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and uh, there I started my uh, journey in Canada. And um, basically, <clears throat> um, I finished my bachelor in the University of Winnipeg, and uh, I've done my graduate studies in uh, college and my second graduate st studies in UK. And uh, uh, in general, um, I do have two graduate studies, one in the international uh, marketing and another in, uh, in the international business. Uh, and uh, undergraduate studies in the administration and another undergraduate studies in the business information system or what you call now the MIS management information system. Beside this course, I teach also management information system and um, I do teach marketing courses. Now, um, just to be very quickly, uh, while I was uh, were, uh, studying, I was working in the um, uh, in Winnipeg. Uh, started working with uh, as a as a counselor for uh, uh, newcomers to, to Manitoba, where I helped them to you know support and help them from the scratch, where they can apply to the um, to the how they can get their income tax to use the every day for two years. I, I did provide them support and counseling on that. Uh, anything they needed, I did provide it for them. Now, um, then I started working for a, a chartered accountant firm uh, while I was doing my uh, graduate studies. And uh, in that I was working as a, as a auditor for, uh, on behalf of the chartered accounting firm, we went to do income tax plus auditing for, for, for organization and companies. When I graduated, I got an offer uh, to work for in Abu Dhabi, uh, to work as a product manager for SAP. 
because we were implementing for EDGAS, Abu Dhabi's GAS, uh, uh, SABHR, and uh, I was in charge of the implementation. And if anybody, just to let you know, uh, Abu Dhabi's GAS is in charge of supplying all UAE with the GAS, an international thing, uh, company. So it was a big project. And we had a different teams, mostly were from Germany coming in. And that was like a 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. And then I um, started teaching in the same time, part-time. And then I was um, offered the job in um, Ejman uh, University for Science and Technology, where they had 14,000 students, seven colleges, seven locations. Uh, I'm sorry, 14 locations. And uh, I was teaching uh, uh, marketing and management courses for the second and fourth year university. But I was born in, in, in Iran and I was 40, 45, 45 days old when I moved to Kuwait with my family. So um, basically I had family in Canada, I had family in Kuwait and I was working in UAE, Dubai. And I kept flying back and forth a lot. So once I got a job offer in Kuwait, I just took it without knowing what it's all about. I, I knew a little bit about it because they had to, I had to go through six job interviews to, to, to be selected. And uh, basically, um, I moved to Kuwait as a headquarter. And it turned out to be, it's called uh, International Turnkey Solution Systems Company. And it's their job uh, integrating different type of solution with each other. They, they have around 3,000 consultants, IT consultants. And they had uh, 28 offices in uh, 22 countries. So, um, I was in charge of establishing, they had two core businesses. They were supplying and implementing um, core banking solutions or banking solution in general for many, many banks in North Africa, in Europe, in South America, and in Asia. And they were also um, uh, working in the telco solution where they provided uh, telecommunication solution and uh, uh, including um, something called tabs which is telecommunication administration and biz, uh, uh, and billing system which is later on was purchased by uh, huawei or huawei whatever you call it um, they paid over over um, something around one billion dollar for uh, buying the application and uh, buying uh, the accounts because they had accounts all over Middle East, no, uh, uh, North Africa, South Africa, Central Africa. So Huawei wanted to have an access to this account, so they wanted to so they bought the software because Huawei has a hardware. So <clears throat> uh, the third leg or the third uh, industry that they wanted to, before they, uh, they wanted to, to get involved in it, it's the higher education solution. So they asked me to join them to establish their higher education solution. From there, it's basically, I started in the marketing department but as a marketing department, I was the product manager. So I was in charge from A to Z to establish everything for them, including training them, training the salespeople, training the marketing team, training the, uh, the technical team of how to communicate and how to work with universities. Um, I also were in charge of looking after the supplier because we were looking at, um, you know, SCT Banner, which is one of the top solution in, in, in the worldwide. Uh, so we were, I was in charge of 
localization, customization, supplying. And because it's a full chain key solution, we, I had to look over all the solutions, such as hardwares, networking, softwares, and all this process. Now, delivering all these things had to be in a certain time with a certain implementation. It's, it was a quite complicated um, a, a process. It, it, it is a mix of products, but mostly in a service wise. And each project was an average of $10 million. So uh, we end up signing up uh, around 23 college, top colleges and universities. And, uh, you know, an average of 10 to 20% yearly uh, out of that $10 million we were generating. So overall, it was working for them for 20, uh, 13 years, we managed to generate around $500 million from only a higher education. So it was very really success. Uh, uh, and I was the first person was knowing for providing a higher education solution within the Middle East and, and, and North Africa. So I also was uh, had to, to train the, the, the clients, train the professors, train the teachers how to use these products and what's the benefit of it. Um, plus the presidents and all these things, because we are talking about way, way before, you know, um, the last project that we have implemented it like 10 years ago. Uh, I mean, we started say around 15 years ago or 20 years ago. So it was very new for anybody who is using student information system, um, content management system, uh, library management system, um, as, a, as a SIS, LMS, CMS, um, all these solutions working together under the hardwares, supplying the hardware, plus supplying different solutions. So I went and also established a business plan uh, through, the, uh, my cons uh, through my work for the company. So currently the company offers a full turnkey solution to full integrated turnkey solution because we're talking about integrations with uh, um, uh, uh, financial, HR, and other third party applications. So luckily also I was uh, uh, looking after uh, the partnership of uh, Oracle. So it was easier for me to integrate, uh, to, to manage the integration with them. And uh, the third party was IBM HR Access. Um, so I, I worked with them for the 13 years, um, looking after from A to Z implementation between services and hardwares. It was a very nice one. So then we, I decided to, uh, kind of move, uh, in a different area of, uh, services and, uh, products which is I got involved into uh, mobile applications. And in that time also, we uh, managed to implement um, first government mobile application. And basically it's an HR mobile application where it's provide for the whole government and their employees in Kuwait um, to um, to utilize the mobile applications. Uh, funny, in that time, um, we offered to have, because each mobile application has a core solution and has a frame solution. So we offered that we provide them the frames for, um, for uh, ISOs, which is iPhone. Um, and uh, Android, all kind of applications, uh, all, all kind of mobiles, and uh, Nokia. In that time, because Nokia was very famous also, top, before, more used than the others. But they rejected Android. They said, well, there's not many users of this uh, new Android thing. 
and they asked for a blackberry because lots of people in that time were using blackberry so the frames were set up to 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 do all these three but not android today you know the android is one of the top users because all the other than iso I, uh, iphone the rest is using android almost now um there also i had an international team um my team was divided in the three countries one was in chennai in india most of you people know about chennai india and uh, i had a technical team sitting there i had a team coming from bombay in kuwait and i had a team in uh, one a team in in uh, ukraine and a team in um uh, in russia now you're telling me why there is so many uh, efforts there is the reason because it's an early bird uh, implementation and it is had to be you know um, it, it was very complicated in that time so i had to you know um, not only explore the team i also had to help the the customer to understand what's it's his its expectations, especially a, a department that in charge of the all employees of the government of Kuwait, including the military, the um, uh, you know ministries, and anybody who works for the government or gets a help from the government of Kuwait. So we're talking about over two, three million subscribers will be uh, was for this application. Now the application was is about uh, you know applying for uh, all the HR requirements and had to be integrated and, for, uh, and uh, uh, taking information from Oracle database or DBMS. Meanwhile, we had two combination um, hardware and software. So all these has had to be um, probably assembled in the right time, right way, to make sure things is running. Now, because it was a government, so we had few restrictions to work on it. So uh, if you're talking about implementation these days, is an implementation would be costing around no more than $25,000 in that time. We charged around $450,000 for implementation a mobile implementation. So imagine how, uh, as an early bird startup, it was um, a very good start there where we um, were ahead of all the companies in, 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 in that region. <clears throat> now, um, from there, I started working as a chief operating officer for a company called uh, One Global. And One Global it provides something called MVAS, which is Mobile Value Added Services. And basically they have an application, it's a one hub application. And this application is connected to your e-wallet, to credit cards, and to, to your, um, what's I'm gonna call, um, uh, services that we are looking for. So it's in one hub, and we will be probably doing some assignment about this one also, where you, as an individual, you go in on that uh, mobile application, and you do all your purchases, is like you're walking in a mall, where you pay uh, your hydro, your mobile uh, expenses, um, I don't know, pay your bills, uh, pay, um, uh, make donation, buy um, gaming applications, and it was all connected in one hub. So it was a little bit also complicated because you had to do an integration with the bank and you had to get a license as a, as a you know, third party to, to do the facilitating. And you also had to get the suppliers willing and ready to supply you or to collect 
uh, money on behalf of you. So let's say you have uh, some apps to sell, they will put it on your, your online for you. And anybody who's downloading it, it needs, you know, he needs to pay it. So we had to pay it back to them or pay it up, up front. So there is a, it is a virtual um, supplying uh, process. Um, so the good part of it, I can help and I can support you in the physical supplying process and virtual supplying process. Now also, um, or, you know, uh, supply chain management, in this both field. And also in a mix one, we, I have that experience also where I provided um, services and behind it some product or a product behind it some services. We will talk about this on the details. Now, um, I was the chief operating officer uh, for One Global Canada, but the issue was most of our implementation, and by the way, it's, a, it's an international company, and they, the good part of it, they are ahead of everybody. So if, if we're looking at this one, we're looking of what's going to happen in the next 10 years, because they started this application something like 15 years ago, which is a quiet, um, uh, that days there was nothing such thing, you know, one hub, uh, almost not many of them. We, in that time we heard of PayPal only, uh, nothing on a detail. And this company is kind of a way ahead of everybody still, they're trying, they are trying to be a way ahead. Recently they came up with a, um, a health application where they, they, they uh, help you in, keeping up to the standard your health application. Um, but the only thing is we had quite a few projects in, in, uh, for OG Canada because OG is the mother company which has had the locations. One location in Europe looked after the Europe, one in USA, one in Canada, which is I looked after it, but I also had to look after some countries in Middle East also. And there is OG in Kuwait, but they had the um, development house in India, and they had customer care in Egypt. Now it's it's written in so many languages, and the application was so flexible where you can, you know, it depends on the country we we were able to uh, uh, in charge uh, launch it. So there is lots of supplies on it, but on a different type of uh, suppliers. And we needed to speak with the suppliers to set up this system. So the, the only thing it was like, I had to travel so many places. And uh, I basically for the last 20 years, I lived on the plane. And, um, uh, you know, my family started growing. And so I said, well, I'm in Canada, so I'll, I need to work uh, from Canada, actually, not to, to travel so many things. Because it was, when I, when I had to take a trip for OG, which is called One Global, and there is OG money and all these things, I had to go away for like a three weeks, four weeks, four weeks sometimes. And that was uh, difficult for me. So I got a job, a job offer with a company called, um, uh, technology evaluation centers and uh, probably some of you uh, heard of uh, Gartner they are the virgin the Canadian version of of Gartner and basically what they do they help the customers who is planning to implement or purchase a new software and when I'm talking about software I'm not talking about you know, Microsoft software. I'm talking about mid-sized to large-sized company software like SAP, Oracle, um, um, and all the big players for operational-wise, uh, like, um, you know, warehouse management solution, supply chain uh, management solution, something like that. 
these companies usually have a plan to purchase a new one or to replace their old one or upgrade. But because they do it once every five to 10 years, and they have to do a commitment of on-site work for over one year to implement such a software. And also they probably have a budget of at least at least um, five to an above million dollars to implement such a software. Usually we get people who have 40, 50 million dollars to implement them. We come in the picture to consult them, to help them, to speed up the software selection process and to make sure everything that they selected, including the hardware and the network and all these things is in synchronizing, working together. It's like you're gonna know, um, the, we, we've done kind of an engineering for, for the softwares. We also help them to, to select the software, get the best price for it, and also build their out of I, out of P, and uh, sign uh, the contract, and supervise the implementation of the contract. So the process was, uh, it used to be a very lengthy, but when it comes to us, it was shortened so quickly and they saved, most of them saved millions of dollars utilizing a technology evaluation center. We will have a short video because what they do is basically they keep researching on the new trends, on the new businesses, on the new softwares that they can match with the, the new trends of businesses. Mostly they uh, uh, their work in the supply chain management. Uh, so we, we, we will speak about them a, a lot. I'm still working with them as a consultant, but because they are located in Montreal and my family didn't speak any French, so uh, I, I, I've, I've asked them that I can uh, be located in Toronto. So right now I, I live in Toronto with my family and uh, whenever they need me, I can provide them support because most of the customers that I deal with, once again, they are overseas uh, in USA or in Middle East and Saudi Arabia in uh, mostly, or in uh, get customers in, in India, in Egypt also, they're all, because selecting a software is something that you do it as a big companies once every five years or 10 years. So you don't have that much experience. And the problem comes in, the, the professional salespeople from SAP and Oracle comes in and take over. So we are helping them, the customers, which is the big company who wants to purchase this software. We make them a professional buyer and selectors and implementers. So this is the, 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 the thing that uh, we, we used to do. Now, I apologize for the background sound because there is, uh, um, what's one called? There is a, a, a garbage today, collecting garbage. So, uh, and this is what uh, the bad part of working from home is the fact that there is an external noises once in a while shows up. Now, before I talk about the business plan, I want to speak to you about the picture behind me. See, um, I was I was better looking guy in that time. Um, that was taken probably three years ago. Um, I went to um, a location in Iran, which is the Empire of Persia. I think some of you guys have uh, you know heard of it. It it is it's one of the you know two empire was running the world, uh, one the empire of Persia and one the empire of Roman. Uh, luckily, because this place in Iran is not very much famous uh, because of the sanction thing, but it could be as good as any historical location. The place was huge and, you know, I've enjoyed uh, and was eye-opening for me to see how big was I can feel how big was the empire of Persia because where it was, it was like a United States. There is 
empire, uh, the Persia in charge of, of so many places. And they called themselves the king of the kings. So every year there were kings from different country comes with their gifts to this area and sub, uh, show the submission um, to this play, uh, to the king of the kings. And it's a huge place. I went to Egypt to, you know, to watch the pyramids and all these things. I went to lots of historical places, but I never were that much impressed with this uh, place. Now, um, so I really enjoyed my trip there. And because luckily, because, or unluckily, because it's a sanction, it's not considered as one of the ultimate places to visit. Now, um, I've also, during my work, I end up working in Iraq. Now, most of you get people get scared, but um, I worked in Iraq and we, I was in charge of implementing uh, two, um, uh, uh, two, uh, solve, uh, two uh, solutions for, uh, tel uh, for telecommunication companies. So the good part of it, it I had so much challenge because I had around 25 members of my team that are located in Kuwait and in Dubai. And I had around um, 30 people newly graduated in Iraq uh, under my supervision and getting trained. We had uh, me and one person only there because of the risk thing. And we were delivering hardwares, network, uh, software, a full ten key solution. So it was a little bit complicated, but when we went to Iraq, I wanted to go and see um, how shall I put it? The cradles of civilization, at the place where this whole the civilization started, which is the old Babylon. So I went to see that, and it was really nice to go there, because this is the the oldest city known for the human being, where they had to write. Um, you know, um, documents, documenting uh, the, uh, the rights of the citizens. And that, that's the cradle of civilization. And I'm not saying cradle of a humanity, it's a cradle of civilization. That is the first place the, um, the civilization started, the cities started. And um, it's the same place where Alexandria the Great uh, died there. So there is a place for him there. So it's nice to go and see where the Roman came and, and invaded um, the Persian empire by Alexandria the Great, and he died there. So uh, it was interesting for me to see that. But n n nonetheless, the place that I, I, I've enjoyed it most, uh, not Egypt, not, uh, uh, you know, Babylon, this is the place behind me, which is, it was very uh, quite interesting. Although I, also I went to, uh, I didn't uh, spend that much time in India, but I also uh, spent some time in mostly my trips were to India, where uh, in, uh, in, 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 in uh, Chennai, uh, I visited Bombay, but Chennai was because most of my partners and my co-workers uh, located in, in mostly in Chennai. Um, I'm, I'm still working with them. Uh, and uh, sometimes we have some products, so we need to supply them, so supply some customers. Recently, what I'm working on, which is uh, almost gonna go live, it's something called um, in the field of artificial intelligence. And it's basically for um, qualifying clients for uh, health insurance and for uh, insurance in general. We noticed that um, this, uh, the, 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 the insurance broker 
had to go to so many um, uh, qualification process, costing time and money for them. So we came up with an application, which is already built with my team in India, with my partners in India, and it's basically qualified whether this per, uh, this potential client is a qualified to to purchase or invest or all these things. So that was the part where we had to, um, uh, you know, work on it. It's supposed to go live um, very soon also. And um, besides this and that, I, I also teach in the Centennial College, as I said, the management information system, which is part of its supply chain management and operation and the software selections of it. And I, I'm here to support you with the supply uh, chain management and operations. Um, without further ado, um, we have, um, unfortunately, this is the second week. So we, we're already behind. So I'm trying to catch up um, between, you know, the, the class presentations and this course. Now, I will supply you with all the information and this um, uh, video record also will be available for you plus all the documents that you are looking for. Do you have any question for me? Please write it or speak to me. If you can write it, that would be wonderful. Okay. Now, I'm going to uh, share a document with you. So we need to go over it to make sure that we have the same synchronization in understanding um, what is expected from you and what I'm supposed to deliver to, uh, for you. And we will take it from there. I've already shared it, so you can download it and look at it, or you look at it through this. So basically, uh, allow me to, uh, to share uh, the screen. Okay. Okay. Now, this course is called Supply Chain Management. And it's uh, the book will be named Operation and Supply Chain Management. And the reason I chose Operation and Supply Chain Management because you are not in a field of just understanding how the things is going to work. I want you to have a, a hands-on experience or able to, once you get into the work field, you should be able to work right away. So we will go through that stage because it's the difference between college education and university of edu education is the fact that um, college is more vocational so i this is why i chose to have more um, both operation and supply chain management so i need you to understand the the supply chain management the whole picture the detailed pictures and the operation part of it so it's important to understand the everything of it now um Okay, um, once again, um, just apologizing today because if you hear any outside no noise, I have my air condition is broken. So I have the windows open. Uh, unfortunately, this is happening. So um, just uh, let me, uh, give me a sec second um, to, to go over this now. So the course will be for the spring, and uh, uh, it's an uh, assessment plan there. It's all online. Um, any question, anything, you can uh, email me or get in the chat and talk to me about it, or uh, even uh, uh, utilizing uh, these numbers. Now, um, the first thing that I was looking for 
I wanted to talk about the assessment plan, which is the assignment one. And uh, I wanted to have um, some international uh, flavor in this course, because most of us, all of us, have an international background and uh, an international flavor for it is it is very important uh, for all of us now the first assignment is i wanted you to to understand uh, the, the one of the biggest portal of jabal ali uh, of the world as as a diverse it's it's called jabal ali and jabal ali is a hub located in the beginning of persian gulf and basically connect um, um, the Gulf region with all the um, rest of the world. Um, can you hold on a second? I will share it again for you. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, just a second. Just give me a second, please. Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna share the document again with you. I just, okay. Now, um, I just didn't want you to have the background sound uh, sometimes, uh, you know, very strong. Now, so on the week five, and if you notice on a week five, we're gonna get 10% of that, which is about you go on the site, try to understand the Jebel Ali um, uh, uh, International Logistic and Trade Port. Now, why Jebel Ali? Because what we understand there is it, it is a, a headquarter for many ports worldwide, including they've already purchased some ports in, in USA, in Europe, in um, Middle East and Africa. So they are not only having their own port in Dubai, they are worldwide managing many, many ports. And believe it or not, all this, some of you guys heard of the war happening between Yemen and Saudi Arabia and UAE, and it's all over because in Yemen there is some place a port that's more important than Dubai. So the what they do, they're getting really aggressive. Where whereas China is expanding, they trying to build a port there or running under their supervision. So J Jabal Ali is a, is a hub where international company comes in and have some operation there. Now these international companies coming from USA, from India, from China from uh, all over the world, Europe, and they have a location there and they bring their products there. Some of them, they process some of their product. Some of them, they're buying from each other their product and um, they re-export it. So there is a big chain of supply and some chain of management happening. For example, within Jebel Ali, there is a wheat processing company which is supply to Ethiopia and Eritrea um, wheat. And we're talking about this company supplies to over 70 million, 80 million people worth of wheat. And this wheat is coming from um, India, uh, Australia, and Canada. Comes as, and, and the company processes there and then uh, put it in, uh, convert it to weed, uh, and then uh, put it in the bags and send it to uh, feeding up uh, breads and you know cakes and all these things for over uh, 80 million people. That's one hub. Um, 
So there was a huge uh, place. Um, and one of the reasons why UAE is considered to be one of the richest countries as a GDP is because of, of this hub. And it's a very sophisticated one. So I want you to go on site, start understanding, and write an assignment about this hub and how it's working. You will have on a week six, uh, which is now we are on a week two, by the way. Today is a week two. On a week six, you will have an open book test. Open book test is, you know, I need you to understand um, whatever we taught, uh, the materials that I'm going to supply, plus whatever in some some of stuff in the book, and utilize them. Now, the second assignment, this the first assignment, it's about uh, a products, and there is a service behind it. The second assignment that I want you to do, which is on a week 10, is about a service with a product behind it. So it's totally a little bit reverse. So no matter what kind of business you're gonna do in the future, it might be a product and a service behind it, or a service with a product behind it. A service with a product behind it, believe it or not, IBM. Uh, most of us think that IBM is a, uh, offer us laptops and, and uh, um, servers. As a matter of fact, they see them, IBM, they call themselves IBM servers. And uh, they are not a product company, they are a service company. But they offer a product to solve, uh, to, to promote their services. Um, so I wanted to have a balance assignment, balance understanding. Sometimes you're gonna get involved with somewhere where you will be um, probably uh, working with the products and service behind it, or working, or sometimes you're gonna go be a place where there's major service and some product behind it. And most of the companies in India, when they're working with the North America, they're working with the services and some product behind it because they are in the mostly involved in the IT solutions. Now, <clears throat> the most important thing that I will be looking at, and please keep in mind, it's a very important for you. Every week, we will have of previous this week discussion chapter. And it's important, that's the reason I put 10% on it. That's one thing, 10% important. But keep in mind, I had some students in my previous classes, they were not participating in the class discussions. And unfortunately, there are some exams or tests or assignment they didn't do well because they had some family issues. And because they didn't participate, I didn't get to know them. So when they came and raised that, they said they had a families or they or unlike things that didn't do well, I wasn't in a stage of judging them uh, uh, whether they are good or not. Now, um, unfortunately, I had to, uh, uh, you know, um, be a very, um, unbiased with them. But if you're participating in the class discussions, if you're part, uh, uh, active, not only are you going to get your 10% grade, you're also going to have all the benefits of raising any case that you might face in the future. And I will be very positive to help them because I had some students also, they were very active in the, in the, in the, in the, in the class. But unfortunately, they did not do well for some reason in one of their assignments. And when they came and explained that to me, I knew them right away because they were good students. So they deserved an A for, from me because I know I can associate with them. And we don't have a perfect life. We have up and down. So we need to make sure that we are uh, you know, participating, presenting ourselves. Now, also, I'm going to divide you in a groups. So if you're a little bit shy, you can write 
if you want to talk, you can talk. And if you want to, you know, uh, write indirectly, I can read what you wrote and then announce it to the, the rest of the class. And there is no mistakes. We are here all supposed to make mistakes to make, you know, um, to do well. If we don't make mistakes, we're not going to do well in life. So the last assignment, which is I put at 25%. See, on week 12, you have a or another uh, test too, open book test. But on the last assignment, I put 25% in a group SME project. SME means subject matter expert, where you need to, by that stage, you're already considered to be um, expert in the field of uh, supply chain management and uh, uh, an operation. So I'm planning, uh, I will, you know, put you on a, on, a, on a group, or it could be made of four or five people, where you will be presenting and giving me your final subject. And the subject was, it was about um, best practice that you can select for an organization, whether in service or in product, and come up with the best practice as an SME, as a subject matter expert. Now you will be selecting the company that you want to work or with it. So you might say, okay, I will work for this company X or Y or Z, and you define that company and you come up with a group assignment where you submit a, a hard copy or through email to me actually. Uh, through email um, or Dropbox, and you will be presenting. And that's on the week 13 and probably will have an extension to week 14. So uh, once I divide you guys, you need to make sure that um, you get to know each other as a group and uh, try to communicate. Now, the only issue that I wanted you to do also is I want you to make sure you nominate one person who can talk on behalf of the group with me for any 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 um, uh, issue that arises while you are doing this project. It's not going to be a difficult one, by the way. You will be enjoying it. Now, um, I will suggest some um, apps that they can help you in doing this presentation and doing this, uh, the last project for you. Now, the issues here, keep in mind, when, when you look at your group, I'm pretty sure not all the group is very, have the same strength. Some of you good in writing, some of you good in uh, searching, and some of you good in presenting. So we try to allocate who is good in what, and uh, uh, somebody, uh, and divide the job. I try to you know you know better how you because in, in 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 a real field of work, there is no single person working. It's always a group working together as individ an individual task is very limited. In, 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 in an advanced uh, companies. Uh, it's all a, it's about a group work. And you might have on a week uh, five, uh, probably maybe week four, because next week will be week three. So on a week four, uh, you will have a quiz and on week nine, I will be announcing about your quiz one week earlier. So I would say like, guys, next week, seven days from now, you will have an announcement about it. Now, uh, just give me a second.
Okay. Um, I'm just going to stop. Uh, I think we will take a break, but I'm going to stop sharing this and I'll check the messages. Okay. Oh, for choosing your group. Um, I, in the beginning, I will assign the group. And um, you, it would be difficult to choose. Uh, I will be assigning it. Now, if you don't like your group, you have a one week to, to I would say the engagement week. And if you can, uh, if it cannot synchronize with your group, you can ask other group to switch with you. So assuming one, you are in a group A and you wanna to go to the group B, somebody from group B is willing to switch or there is a space in a group B. So I can add you there. Now today, there will, there will be no definitions of who's gonna be in your group. Well, thank you, Diksha, for this question. Um, that was the question, very important question to say. So that, yes, you have the flexibility, but let's go through, what should I say? You, first of all, you get engaged, get to know your uh, future wife or future husband. And if you don't like the future wife and future husband, you just uh, you know take your ring off and say goodbye. So this week and next week will be an engagement process. Get to know each other. Maybe you uh, you keep on with going with the group, or maybe you want to switch your group. That's okay, but make sure that you are um, um, you know uh, okay with that group. Good afternoon. Okay, um, what we'll do now, uh, I think uh, let's finish the, uh, the plan and we will take a break if you don't mind because there's not much remaining in the plan. We'll take a break, a good one, good break. Okay. Um, okay. Now, so don't worry about the exams and quizzes and everything. Uh, okay, see, uh, if you do know um, each other, that would be wonderful. So you can send me an email one per uh, you, you establish the group and send I, I want the group to be synchronizing to understand each other to easy to work with each other so uh, uh please uh, if you think that this group works fine somebody from you will send me uh, a representative saying okay i represent this group and i will be in charge of the communicating with this group and uh, this will be the ones who is going to present the assignment and uh, you know the final assignment. But be, also, you will have to meet to be a member in a different group for the by the way for the discussions class discussion for every uh, week, and that's a different thing. But for the assignment, yes, um, if you can send me saying. I, these people are members of my group. And then whomever comes late, if you don't know anyone, no worries, because I will put you in a, in a group uh, you, or you stay with it. You can come and say, um, I will be a member of that group, okay? So um, we will have, hopefully this class, we will have a divided group. And then from there, we can adjust people around, add more, less. But for every group, I need one person to say, yes, I am the main communicator with you. So any changes there, I will be, he will be uh, 
accounted for. Um, so um, don't worry about this because it will be developed because the whole issue this week and next week and probably the week after is a, an engagement process that consider yourself you are in, got engaged with this group and for some reason, if you don't feel okay, you have to justify why you want to shift away from that. Because shifting means, I don't want to end up having 10 people in one group and two people in another group. I wanna balance all, all, all of you guys uh, as a number wise. Now, as a, as a strength wise, you can discover between each other um, how you can deliver this uh, final assignment, which is 25% of, of your mark. And by the way, don't worry about it. I'm not a hard marker. Um, I look at your understanding of the subject and ability to research and find information because the only thing in life constant is changing. So if you're not able to adjust to the information worldwide and changing, it will be, you will be um, having a hard time. Now, I just wanna finish this and we we'll discuss everything after, uh, after the break also. Now, the book, first of all, uh, we wanted to make sure that, um, we go to according to the college policies. Now, attendance is not part of the college policies, but it's important for sometimes the immigration ask about the college policy. Attendance. So I need to submit that to the to the to the college uh, through uh, because uh, on, on the on the on the Zoom there is a way of to see who is uh, attending these classes. Uh, so if they require that, I have to submit the attendance. Now, participating in the class is a 10%. So if you're not attending the class, it means you're not participating and, and the discussion. And that's probably it affected uh, the class discussion marks that you have. Now the book, so please make sure you attend the classes. The book that I'm looking for is you will find it in McGraw Hill, and you can uh, you can establish already. You've been I think have no issues of uh, uh, sign up for the McGraw Hill, and the book is it looks like probably this one is not showing well, but I will show you to you later on on uh, uh, after the class when we go on the McGraw Hill website. Um, here you need to read about the participation, attendance. I think most of you guys had gone through this. So the name of the book, once again, that I'd like you to read about it, to understand about it, is the, the book name is it's called the operations and supply chain management and it's available on McGraw Health. Now I think you need to take a break now because when we come back we will speak about uh, I will answer all your questions if you have any question and we should, uh, we talk about the learning plan deliveries so um, I probably will come back in uh, say uh, now uh, 15 minutes, so uh, 2.25, we will join again, okay? Now I will uh, pause this uh, until we come back again. But I will be online to answer all your questions hopefully, but I need a break also. Uh, okay, um, 
I hope you took a good break. Uh, I'm sorry, this class is a little bit heavy because um, uh, first class and there is so much uh, information, but if we might make sure that we manage uh, the first class very well, then we will be able to um, uh, move easier in the, uh, the rest of the classes. Now, I um, was hoping to, to, you know, to one chapter, but it seems to me it would be difficult to, to get into uh, the chapter. But uh, let's continue. Hopefully, let's see how far we can get with that. And um, I will be sharing uh, the light, last slide with you guys. So we finish uh, this part of uh, um, uh, the business plan. Okay, um, if anybody doesn't see that or cannot hear my voice, please write to me. So I will uh, talk about it. Now, the learning plan is basically today, which is week one and week two, but um, the introduction to operation, we might be doing it next week. Um, uh, the course, uh, it would be the course outline and getting to know you. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, now we getting to know each other step by step, but I hope within two, three weeks, we will be managing to know each other very well. Um, and the second week, it goes week by week, introduction to operation and supply chain management, which is there where we will be understanding to, uh, you know, with all of you guys in the same level. And also we will be talking about, um, you know, jobs that you might find within the supply chain management and operation. Most of us thinking that uh, marketing and sales, finance, um, that's where you find most of the job. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> supply chain management and operation, this is where you find most of the job. And sometimes you would think about it saying, okay, that cannot be a part of this job. But then, you know, for example, project management, project engineering, uh, product engineering, uh, um, chief operating officer, CEO, is part of the supply chain management, by the way, so an operation. So we will be talking about jobs and positions that you might be applying for it. Um, and uh, this fourth week, we uh, will talk about service process. Now, these chapters might be differentiated going up and down, but I will supply you with the with uh, my presentations, so you will be aware of which chapter we are talking about and uh, which chapter we are covering. And we. we in the service process, we differentiate between service and product process. Then we will talk about the material requirement for planning. So when you're planning for a supply chain or for an operation, what kind of material you need. On a week six, we'll talk about, uh, the, I mean, it's gonna be an open book test and inventory management will be on the uh, week seven and uh, it would be the effect of kinds of material on inventory management. So we need to do some mathematical, but not much of it, um, cost accounting. Uh, you won't be doing a very heavy on the cost accounting, but you would need to understand the inventory management and the cost of inventory management. And then we will be talking about how we're gonna have a total quality management and just in time and using these to convert to a lean supply chain because supply has to be always there. And then we will talk about how the, 
the supply chain management will follow or will operate according to the sales. Now, the, the, most of the top managers, unfortunately or fortunately, they come with a background of sales, uh, maybe financial, but they have less understanding of <clears throat> what it takes to, to have a successful operation detail-wise. One of the things is the most crucial is really to set up the right process of supply chain management and the operation of it. So any CEO or any top manager who understand what it takes to be a, 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 a successful in the business, he understand that the importance of supply chain management and setting up the right operation. So we're going to go through this course, understanding uh, best standards. Sales and operation, operating planning, uh, that would be on the week nine. And then on the uh, location logistic distribution, we'll be talking about a different location logistic and distribution and these days you will see um china is one of the top uh, is going to com it's competing very well with uh, with the usa as the highest uh, revenue uh, income uh, as a country and the reason they are work they work very well between their products setting up the location working on the logistics and distribution. They're also going from a country to country to build their hubs. And they're doing very well in this part of it to make sure they win the war of trades. We will be talking about global sourcing and outsourcing and procurement. And then on week 12, you will have a test and week 13 you will do your assignments um if you don't have any question let me know if you have any questions uh please write it to me or uh here on the chat or email it to me okay um now back to the answering your group the group gets developed stage by stage. So by first day, you will not define your group. Don't worry about it. You know some people, you want to be part of their group, it's okay. But in the real life, you cannot pick your own group. Sometimes you end up working with the people that you just don't like them. And you have to work, uh, look at the, 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 the good part of working with these people. So seriously um i don't see you need to be a perfect and i what i wanted to do is to make sure that you start discovering each other and see where's the strength part of it and work on that so one of the uh, group leader task and the whole group is to come up within each each one group and say okay that's my strength and this is my weakness. So um, according to that, um, you can uh, start uh, establishing yours. And we have enough time, we have 14 weeks. Okay. Um, now, Um, please stop me whenever you have any question. Just write it and I will announce it uh, uh, for you. I will give a, a short uh, video to, to look at it. So it's going to give you some flavor of where, are taking, or where I'm taking you guys. But before that, um, let me go to see... Um, 
um, probably uh, let's talk about see the the the, the video it's about what is supply chain management? Just to give me a sec. Okay. Okay, I will uh, share a screen now. To What's about supply chain? What is supply chain management? Today we're going to discuss what supply chain management is, the four main links that make up the supply chain, and finally follow along with some real world examples of how effective supply chain management works. The global supply chain is all around us, from stocking the shelves in your local grocery store, to securing your weekend getaway hotel, to ordering online from your favorite website. All of these tasks require the global supply chain. What happens when your favorite ice cream isn't on the store shelf? Your vacation gets canceled because you can't find a hotel room, or your favorite website can't get your products. When this happens, it's called a breakdown or missing link in the chain of supply. Supply chain management means improving the supply process from one end to the other. It includes the design, planning, execution, control, and monitoring of supply chain activities. The role of supply chain professionals is to put on their creative thinking caps and collaborate with various areas within the organization to identify the problem and find a solution that prevents the breakdown from happening again. There are four main links that make up the supply chain. They are manufacturing and operations, transportation, warehouse and distribution, and purchasing. Let's take a look at the main links. Manufacturing is the part of the supply chain where raw materials, ingredients, and or parts are put together through a process to produce a finished product. Jobs within manufacturing include planners, schedulers, and assemblers. They monitor the flow and quality of the products being produced. Transportation is the movement of products within the chain of supply using different modes of transportation, including trucks, air, rail, pipelines, or ships. Jobs within transportation include planners, schedulers, truck drivers, and pilots. Warehouse and distribution includes the sites and locations where everything that flows through the supply chain is stored. We refer to all stored items as inventory. Purchasing is the process of buying everything needed at the best price and quality to produce a final product that meets the customer's requirements. Let me introduce Cheesy. 
He's going to show you a real-life example of how cheese flows through the supply chain, starting with it in the simplest form and ending with the cheese you can enjoy as an afternoon snack. Hello, everyone. Have you ever wondered where cheese comes from and how far it has to travel before it reaches your refrigerator? Well, today's your lucky day. I'm going to show you the entire process. Let's start with the suppliers who provide all of the raw materials. It all starts with the dairy farmers who raise and milk the cows. They provide the milk. The purchasing team coordinates purchases from these and other suppliers who provide additional cheese-making ingredients like milk, salt, rennet, and whey. It's important to move the milk and the other ingredients with the most appropriate type of transportation, whether that's a semi-truck, a rail car, a boat, or an airplane. Picking the right transportation method is an important decision that's made by transportation coordinators. They must make sure the ingredients arrive on time to meet the scheduled delivery date. Once all of the ingredients arrive at the manufacturing facility, a production team within the manufacturing facility goes to work making the finished goods product that we call cheese. Until we know who the customer is, the cheese needs to be stored in a cool, dry place in the warehouse. Depending on where the cheese is stored within the warehouse, a truck or forklift may need to move the cheese to the appropriate location. Once a customer places an order, the warehouse employees locate the correct variety and they place it on another truck that delivers the cheese to the customer. The cheese is now in your refrigerator and ready for your next snack. Getting the cheese to your refrigerator can be a complicated process, which is why effective and productive supply chain management is so important. While the products are flowing through the chain of supply, many other cross-functional business departments are responsible for supporting the smooth flow within the chain of supply. Let's hear how some of their roles support the supply chain. Customer service. I'm the voice and the link between the external customer and the manufacturing facility. I ensure that the customer's wants and needs are being successfully met and that the products are delivered on time. I participate in daily calls with the customer, sales representatives, production, purchasing, and distribution, just to name a few, to ensure that we're providing exceptional customer service. Marketing. I provide the supply chain professionals with important information regarding consumer trends, promotional opportunities, pricing, and placement of products and services into the marketplace. I play a valuable role during weekly capacity planning meetings to ensure that we're meeting our customers' needs at the right times and at the right places. Engineering. I help select appropriate suppliers by providing the technical specifications and reviewing their products to ensure they conform to specifications. I also design the processes and equipment used to make the cheese, the packaging that facilitates the transportation and storage of the cheese, and the grocery store displays showcasing the cheese. Finance. I ensure that we're managing our inventories to the best of our ability. At the end of the day, our business needs to make a profit because that's what allows us to keep our doors open for many years to come. IT. As an information technology professional, I automate processes, link business together using software, and develop reporting systems to manage data. All of these functions work together to positively impact my organization's bottom line. Quality. My job is to ensure that we have well-defined processes and inspections in place for all incoming raw materials and outgoing finished goods. If our customers aren't happy, I need to identify the root cause of the problem and find out what needs to be done to improve our product and make the customers happy. As you can see from our example, the supply chain is all around you and is part of your everyday life. As a supply chain professional, you get to work with many people from different areas of the business to solve problems, analyze data, improve processes, and build strong relationships that support the chain of supply. You have finished. What is supply chain management? Yes, um, the question says, um, it, okay, hold on a second. But the question is, uh, could we get the e-learning plan uh, 
on e-learning? Yes, you will. Um, right now, I did send you the copy of the, the, the learning plan. Uh, I shared it with all of you. Uh, some of you, if they didn't sh get it, uh, please uh, down, uh, download it, but it, it can be on, on, on the site uh, also. Uh, and this is once we finish this class and every class by end of the class, I will uh, upload it to a Google and I will send you a link for the Google where you can go and start watching it or download it, the course uh, also. So um, I will share this document again for with you. Um, once or I'll send it to you as an email to all of you, and also I will um, uh, post it on your on the on the on the models on the Alpha. Uh, college site. So you shouldn't, you wouldn't have a problem with getting this part of it. Um, now, there is, um, before, I don't think we, we will have a time to break into groups today because um, it would be nicer that when we break into groups um, that you already have something to discuss between each other. So that's the, the, the part is that uh, you need to, uh, to look at it. Now I'm sending the, the same supply chain management e-learning plan again to you. So please download it and have it saved um, to all of you. So, um, so you can have a copy, but whenever you go to the, to the website of uh, Alpha, you're also gonna have it there. And end of each class, uh, I will share with you the, 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 um, the, the PD, uh, the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so you can download it and save it with you. You will find, the goal is to have it available in everywhere for you. So you can go to, to the Google, watch the video. You can go uh, later on, you know, YouTube, watch the video, I'm sorry, not Google. YouTube can watch the video, the, the class. You can um, go to, to the uh, alpha and download the documents that you're looking for. And also, meanwhile, I'm in the class, I will be sharing these things with you uh, again. Now, I will put uh, uh, one more video. Uh, the attendance is basically, um, I will, I have an attendance that I can download it from Zoom. So I don't need to, to do the attendance with you. I just go to the Zoom and uh, download the participant list. So your name, if you're attending, uh, uh, it will be a part of the participant list and I will save it. And whenever the college is asking me for that, I will supply them with that. Now, um, I also will be using it for myself to evaluate your 10% uh, of the, the discussion part, whether you've been attending and also you've been uh, you know, sharing this, this information with us. Now, before we break, um, I think uh, we, we started, uh, our class is started at one o'clock and it should be over at three o'clock. Now, um, I'd like to show you one more video. And this is uh, uh, basically, uh, yes, the same question asked uh, for the attendance. <clears throat> the attendance is basically, um, I will write it also, attendance, will be downloaded from Zoom application. So you don't, you don't, so you don't need 
you do not need to do any attendance. As long as you signed in in the class. Okay. If if you, if anybody missed that, he can read it. Or if you still have a question, please, please, this class, I'm not going to be only your instructor and just talking to you and you listen to me. No, it, it is sharing thing. The more you sh we share the thought, the more we progress very well. The more you enjoy the class, the more I will um, uh, enjoy the class also. We are one team. And when, whenever you, you're going to be in a group, if you are five people in a group, I will be your number six. If you're four people in a group, I will be your number fifth. If two people, I will be third. So I'm also a member of your each groups. But before we break in, I want to make sure one thing, please, by next week, I need each one of you send me your CV, which is your resume, and have your picture on it with your contact information, because we need to do, uh, um, uh, you know, get to know each other very well. Because my goal is, I want to know you that much when I'm walking in the street and I look at you, I say, okay, this is, this is uh, so-and-so, it was my student, without knowing you. Uh, but if we don't, you know, I mean, some of you don't want to share the pictures here or the live video, I understand. But I need you to send you your CV so I can understand your background, ability to understand, and come back. Uh, uh, okay, if you leave before the, uh, the 3 p.m., it will show how long you've been attending the class. So if you came at 2.30 and you left at 2.45, it's showing like you are attending 15 minutes, for example. The Zoom will take care of that. Don't worry about it. As long as you sign in and you are in the class, it will calculate your time of attending. And it will tell me in the Excel sheet. He, he said 10 mark, okay. If someone leaves the class before 3 p.m., then his attendance will be recorded or not. Yes, it will be recorded and it will tell me when did he leave. Now, um, sure. One more question, uh, Kaur. Um, it's, uh, is there any mark or percentage for the attendance? No, there is no mark or percentage for attendance, but you need that because just in case the college will need to submit this attendance to uh, immigration, that's one thing, which that's not my business. All I need to know is you are um, participating in the class. Class discussion is very important. So to know that you've been discussing in the class, I, it's a uh, when the group, it's, you have to attend it in order to discuss. So this uh, attendance itself does not uh, indicate any marks. The class discussion, asking me, question me, um, justify these information. Give me your experience because I need your experience too. It's true I have lots of experience, but sharing the experience would be wonderful. I would love to know uh, what's your dreams, what's your future plan. Maybe I can suggest some stuff for you. Maybe you can suggest something for me. So it's important so that we, we are a team. Please don't, don't see me as a, you know, a supervisor or instructor or a real professor. See me as somebody who is helping you also. So this is how I like to have this class. And uh, yes, next week, by next week, I like you to send me an email to submit your CV. Your CV will have a picture on it, your contacts, and what you have done so far. If you haven't worked anything, just uh, write me a, a summary, small summary, because I need to know you. 
more than you need to know me uh, because I'm here to support you. I'm here to provide you the services. I'm here to guide you. Um, please uh, utilize my experience. Um, maybe maybe uh, uh, I can give you a hint or two where you can start, how you can start, and all of us have a plan. And we need to start up with the right plan before we uh, you know, move on with our life. So I know it's very really a little bit difficult for you online and, and a challenging, but keep it in, in this mind. All of you guys have families overseas, but, and friends. And now you're communicating with them very well. Look at this online teaching is a, it's another way of communication. It, it's, uh, it's important that we get accommodated. And the good part of it, uh, you and me in from the IT generation. I'm, I'm early IT generation, but I kept myself uh, updated. And you are from current IT generation and we both can work together, uh, pull this course together. It is important course. And the reason it's important is because you will find out that it's so many jobs, so many jobs driven from supply chain management. As a matter of fact, maybe 90% of the jobs in the market is a supply chain management or its operation. Now, also, if you wanted to work in the marketing or sales or finance or uh, uh, you know, IT, you need to know the supply chain management and the operation of it. And, and the more you know about it, the stronger you are in the other fields. Now, uh, there is two minutes to left. Uh, please have your CV next week ready. So next week we'll start the second, uh, first chapter and hopefully we can manage the second chapter. So two chapters together, uh, but no pressures, please. Don't feel stressed. You are there. I'm here for you to help you, to guide you through passing this course. Most of my students usually do well as long as they show me they understand the subject matter very well or well enough. And they show me that they have the tools to, to perform in the future better, to stay updated. That's what I'm looking at. Uh, I come from an IT background and I believe in the IT, we keep changing things so quickly, so fast. Uh, so the IT background is telling me that, you know, you should also have an ability to update yourself. Um, and uh, I would look at that part very, um, on a, on a very strongly because I, I, I like you to think out of box. I like you to think creative and I would like you to, to, to participate with your team and with your group and in this class. I love your questions. Anytime you have, no, you have questions, there is no stupid questions. All the questions that you're gonna write or tell me or send it to me, they're all smart questions. And if somebody asked before you, it's okay. You can ask the same question again and again and again. So please feel free anytime you ask. Now it's at three o'clock. I will see you next week. All this information, I will be updating it sending it through uh, to you on, and you will see it on the Google, uh, on the uh, Alpha College. And you are also gonna get the link for this lecture and the other lectures one by one to see it on YouTube. You guys have a good day and have fun.